to introduce Gary Martin, Directors of New Ventures and the Communications Directorate. He'll kick us off this morning, so welcome and thank you for coming. Hi, good, well, <laughs> good morning, welcome to Ames. Uh, we're excited today to host the unveiling of the mystery team that is competing for the Google Lunar X Prize. The Google Lunar X Prize competition requires that a privately funded spacecraft land on the moon, travel a certain distance, I think it's like 500 meters, and then send video back to Earth, all privately funded, which is an amazing competition. Competitions like this, they stimulate innovative and creative new ways to look at space exploration. And we salute those companies that put their time and their efforts and their money behind this kind of competition. It's important that, um, that NASA, what you gotta, I guess what, from a NASA point of view, why it's important to us, is that NASA isn't trying to stimulate exploration and development of space, but you know, government really can't do that on its own. It's gotta be done with the private industry also, all the way through, and it's very hard to to do the kind of things we want to do in space. So it's important that the government does what the government is good at, but that we can procure services and goods from industry. And this kind of competition stimulates that kind of growth. So it's very important to us. Uh, commercial interests like the XPRIZE Foundation, they have different reasons to motivate to uh, go for these prizes, but they overlap with government interests also in that their creativity and innovation will also come into our sector. And then we saw this in the information uh, area and technology. So we're excited to work with private companies and with the Google X Prize uh, to see these technologies come to fruition for future space exploration development. Uh, these kind of developments uh, cannot be done by government alone and that if we're truly going to be a uh, spacefaring nation, that this is the kind of thing that uh, we'd like to see even more of. Uh, we appreciate the companies and that possess this innovative spirit and take on these very challenging projects like the Google X Prize. And uh, to introduce this new mystery team, I'd like to introduce Will Pomerantz. He's Senior Director and for Space Projects of the X Prize Foundation. All right. Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as Gary alluded to, in September of last year, Google and the XPRIZE Foundation, a nonprofit educational foundation, announced the $30 million Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, this is the largest ever international incentive prize. And it builds on almost three centuries of a successful track record for incentive prizes inspiring engineers, entrepreneurs, uh, brilliant and creative individuals all around the world to do jobs that uh, just before the prize was offered seemed impossible. The uh, rules for this prize, as Gary briefly summarized, are a privately funded team based anywhere on the planet has to send a robotic explorer to the surface of the moon. They have to move around the lunar surface for at least a half a kilometer or about a third of a mile and they have to return two packages of high definition video and high resolution imagery that we call moon casts. This will be the first time that the lunar surface has been explored since the Soviets left in 1976. For those of us who hail from the United States, it will be the first time that we've seen uh, video from the lunar surface since Apollo astronauts left in 1972. Amazingly, half of the people alive on the planet today weren't alive to experience that. So if you think about the sociological impact that the Apollo missions had, or the lunar or Lunacod missions, or other uh, lunar missions that we've seen some government space, space agencies around the world, it's incredibly exciting for us at the XPRIZE Foundation and for our partners at Google to think about igniting the minds and hearts uh, of students around the world, getting them inspired by science, technology, engineering, and math, in general and, and space exploration in particular. Uh, since we announced this prize in September of last year, the response has been absolutely phenomenal. As you can imagine, uh, those of us who choose to work at the XPRIZE Foundation are, are a group of optimists uh, who, who believe in the incredible power of human ingenuity and creativity, but I think even, even we have had our expectations exceeded. Uh, since announcing the prize, we have been contacted by more than 1,600 potential teams in 85 nations all around the world. This is not restricted to your traditional space powers, either in terms of companies and players or in terms of nations. Uh, we just yesterday announced our 15th and 16th teams. 
Those 16 teams are headquartered in seven different countries in Europe, North America, and Asia. Most of them are multinational, so real work is actually being performed today in about 40 nations all around the planet. Uh, many of those individuals are people who never would have had a chance to come and work for a wonderful organization like NASA or uh, its sister agencies. And now they're feeling that they have a chance to play, uh, that they have a chance to bring their creativity, their ingenuity um, into, the, into this field, and that we're all going to benefit um, from their brilliance. Uh, one other really exciting fact is the extent to which universities have answered this clarion call and come up to, uh, to have their play in, the, uh, in this competition. Uh, on our registered teams alone, we have more than 20 universities, again, around the world, and you'll hear about some of those uh, later today. And that's not to count the countless universities who are assigning the Google Lunar X Prize as a homework assignment or an exam problem or a, or a thesis project or things like that. So again, this is a way for the students of the world to have their play, to, to get to test some hardware, which will not only allow us to harness the power of their creativity, but also help train them, make them into better employers for both the private industry and for the for the uh, government and civil space agencies uh, all around the world. So we are incredibly pleased with, with the number of our competitors and with the international scope of our competitors, but perhaps we're most pleased with the caliber of our competitors. I think across the board, uh, we have found that the types of people and the types of institutions and entities that are, uh, uh, that are undertaking this effort, that are trying to win this prize, are incredibly impressive. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll see exactly why we feel that way uh, when you learn a little bit more about our team. Uh, so I want to briefly introduce uh, what we call the mystery team. Uh, this team was actually announced in February of this year just down the road at Google's headquarters here in Mountain View, California, uh, when we announced our first 10 teams. But this team chose to remain uh, sort of behind a curtain, if you will. They chose to keep their identities under wraps while well, they did some of their due diligence and they built up some momentum behind the scenes. Uh, they wanted to wait until exactly the right moment to introduce themselves to the world uh, and to let you know a little bit about who they are and why they're competing in the time. And I think they found a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to come out and announce themselves to the world. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the founder of our mystery team, Michael Joyce. Good morning, as Will said, my name is Michael Joyce and I am the founder of the Google Lunar X Prize Mystery Team. Uh, today I'm excited to announce that going forward we will be known as Team Next Giant Leap. Uh, I'd like to thank Gary for his kind words and NASA Ames for allowing us to utilize this venue today. Uh, thank you, Gary. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank the X Prize Foundation for all the great support that they've given us over the last year. <clears throat> During that time I've had the privilege to work closely with uh, Will here and his excellent staff and they've been very supportive. I, I think Google and the XPRIZE Foundation are true visionaries, and Team Next Giant Leap really salutes the uh, goals and uh, efforts in space exploration that you guys have done. So thanks again. <clears throat> uh, like Will said, about a year ago, last October, I learned about the Google Lunar X Prize. I was out at the uh, Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge in New Mexico, which is another challenge the X Prize puts on. And uh, uh, basically just as a space enthusiast uh, attended that and found out about the prize and, and started thinking about it and very seriously. <clears throat> I realized that uh, winning a prize would require resources well beyond my capabilities and means. So I began to research small aerospace companies that would be interested in uh, working together to tackle this challenge. Uh, that research quickly led me to uh, Microsat Systems Incorporated, which was nearby. Uh, I. <clears throat> I met with uh, the President John Roth and uh, Dr. Todd Mosier, and it was decided that the best path forward might be to remain the mystery team uh, until such time that we'd either successfully recruited the team members that we would need or we decided to abandon the attempt. <clears throat> uh, the next team member to come on board was Draper Laboratory. Draper has been involved in space guidance, navigation, and control since the earliest days of the space program, including the Apollo program. Uh, Draper led us to MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, where we learned that uh, parallel efforts were already uh, underway to develop a Google Lunar X Prize entry. Uh, after talking with them, we decided it would be to both our benefits to merge our efforts together. Aurora Flight Services uh, was already working closely with MIT, and they joined our effort, bringing their expertise in unmanned aerial vehicles and manned space, uh, manned space hardware. <clears throat> Excuse me. About the same time our with our discussions with Busick, uh, or at about the same time we had discussions with Busick, which 
led to them joining the team as well. They specialize in propulsion, especially electrical propulsion systems, and uh, they will be doing a lot of the work in that area for our team. <clears throat> so this is our team as it stands today. I'm extremely proud of the uh, members that have come together and the work they've done so far, and I'm confident that with their expertise, we can accomplish our goals. Now, as Will said, our goal is the, to win the $20 million X Prize. That is our primary uh, mission, of course. But more than that, uh, we have the ambitious goal to win it in such a way that we develop a, a reliable, repeatable uh, lunar transportation system that will be a logical choice for commercial applications to come. We're not sure yet when we will land on the moon. Uh, we have not set a date. Uh, there are many factors involved, but um, uh, we hope to attempt the landing sometime within the next couple of years since we, we have made quite a bit of progress already on our, on our mission plan. <clears throat> As I have already mentioned, our team members are the key elements to accomplishing these ambitious goals. I'm excited to have representatives from three of the team members, or three of our team members present here today, and I'll introduce them now and allow each of them to discuss their companies and their thoughts about competing in the Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, joining us today from Microsat Systems is the president, Mr. John Roth. Mr. Roth joined Microsat Systems in January 2002 and was named president in September of that year. He has more than 25 years experience in the aerospace industry and has demonstrated success in business acquisition and organizational leadership. Mr. Roth holds a, a master's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Southern California and a bachelor's degree in computer engineering from the University of Illinois. He has also attended the Harvard School of Executive Education Program for Management and Leadership and the Wharton Business School Executive Education Program for Finance. Also joining us today from Draper Laboratory is Mr. Sean Murphy, Earth and Space Science Program Manager. Prior to working with Draper, Mr. Murphy founded and managed several high technology startup companies. Mr. Murphy is a graduate of MIT Sloan Business School of Management. <clears throat> and finally, I'm uh, honored to introduce from MIT, Dr. Jeffrey Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman is a former astronaut that has flown on five space shuttle missions, including the 1993 mission to service the, space, or the Hubble Space Telescope. Dr. Hoffman is currently professor of the practice at MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, where he specializes in human spaceflight operations, spaceflight technology, human-machine interactions, extravehicular activity, and conducting laboratory research in space. I'm sure you're excited to hear what these gentlemen have to say, so without further delay, I'll start by uh, introducing Mr. John Roth. Thank you. I'll be mercifully brief. Uh, there's really only two things that I want to address. One is, who is Microsat Systems, since a lot of you might not be familiar with us, and, and the second is, why do you think you can do this? Uh, the first answer is that we're a small satellite company that got formed back in 2001, and most of our people were refugees from Lockheed Martin Space Systems, and uh, they worked on NASA interplanetary missions. And so when we found out that we had the opportunity to join a team to go after the X Prize, uh, our entire staff was incredibly excited about it. Uh, we've been working on defense programs mainly since 2001, and uh, the idea to get back to NASA and something as exciting as going after a lunar lander was uh, too much to pass up for our company. As to uh, why we think we can do it, there's a couple of reasons. One, uh, we currently are, have a contract to build 18 satellites for a commercial company called Orbcom. And uh, you'll, you'll notice if you compare the Orbcom satellite bus to what we're looking at here for the lander and the graphic, they're pretty similar. So we actually have a production line of satellite development going on that we're going to be able to highly leverage. So we feel pretty comfortable that we're going to be able to, uh, to come in at a very reasonable price, which is uh, always a big thing when you're self-funding. Uh, the second reason that we really want to go after this and really what motivates our company more than anything is our parent company, Sierra Nevada Corporation, uh, yesterday, just yesterday, closed on a purchase of another space company called SpaceDev. Uh, SpaceDev built the propulsion system for the Spaceship One, which won the $10 million X Prize. And uh, since they're going to be our sister company, we've got to beat them. Uh, so that there's a real motivation there for our company to win the $30 million prize and, and show them that we can do it. Uh, we are very excited to be on the team. Uh, we have got a lot of efforts, as I said. We're building satellites internally that we can leverage for this. We're also willing to put in some investments of our own, uh, thanks to our parent company, Sierra Nevada Corporation, which purchased us in January of this year. <clears throat> they are a 100% privately owned aerospace company, uh, but they are closer to a billion dollars in revenue, which is a lot more than what our company is. So they have some pockets that can help us uh, get there on this. And so I appreciate you coming, and thank you very much.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Murphy, and I'm representing Draper. Um, Draper is formerly used to be the MIT Instrumentation Lab, and it started just during uh, the World War II, and we've been involved in guidance and navigation and control since the early days, as you alluded to. And uh, one of the big breakthroughs for uh, Draper Laboratory was the Apollo program, where we designed the guidance and navigation, the computer fault co tolerant computer system. So from day one of the NASA's uh, space program, especially with the lunar projects, we have been involved. And currently, we are involved for the guidance and navigation and the landing systems of the current system that we're trying to land, which is the Orion, Well Hat, and uh, the Ares 1 and the Ares 5. So we're heavily involved with NASA, and we continue to do that. But our other mission and uh, charter of Draper Laboratory is first of a kind. And since we're a nonprofit laboratory and we want to do first of a kind, our charter is to do projects like these. And we're very, very excited uh, to partner up with such good teams and partner always with MIT since that's our parent company. We can almost say that, even though now we're two separate entities, but we emerged from it. And we're very, very happy to help and as much as we can in many areas, financially and in with resources. But predominantly, what we're going to do is leverage about 40 years of experience and our knowledge, what we did for the Apollo project and what we're doing right now for the current moon landing system to make this team successful and get the prize. Thank you so much. <clears throat> So some people ask me, why is MIT getting involved in this? I mean, MIT has a pretty good reputation worldwide. We don't need to necessarily do something else just to uh, make sure that people know who MIT is. But what I can tell you is we're doing it for our students. Um, our students love space. They are really excited. I think it's hard for a lot of people of my generation to realize that for our students, Apollo is ancient history. When they heard about the vision for space exploration, that we were going to go back to the moon, I can't tell you the electric feeling that I saw in, in class, that the idea that they somehow could get involved. Now, some of them, I hope, will get involved as, as astronauts and have a chance to fly in space like I did. And actually, MIT has, other than the Military Service Academy, has had more astronauts than any other university. And we've got about a half a dozen graduates in this current competition. But that's not going to be for a few years. And here's an opportunity for our students to actually get their hands on space. And that's what gets students excited. Uh, we often start projects as part of academic classes. Um, my partner uh, at MIT in kind of leading up this effort is Professor David Miller, who's the head of the Space Systems Laboratory. And he's made a specialty of getting students to design flight projects and then go on to actually build them and fly them. Uh, we now have an uh, experiment called SPHERES. It's a, it's a group of three mini satellites that are inside the space station. It's one of the most productive scientific engineering test beds uh, in the space station and it's operating now. Originally designed by students, flown on NASA's uh, parabolic airplane and then eventually turned into flight hardware. That's what we hope to do here. We have a group of very enthusiastic students working on a uh, test sort of demonstrator version of this, and uh, we will look forward to seeing this transformed into flight hardware by the very competent members of the team. And this is something which will attract more students, and you know, we all know this country needs good scientists and engineers, and this is the sort of project that excites them and will attract them. So. We're excited. We're looking forward to uh, going ahead and actually getting to the moon. Thank you. <laughs>